Let's jump right into the EU proposing to force USB-C on all device manufacturers. So this directive in the EU announced this week would require all consumer electronics manufacturers who smell smart, smell, sell smartphones, tablets, cameras, headphones, etc., to feature a common port USB-C in two years. This would effectively mean that Apple would be prohibited from putting a lightning port in future iPhones if they wanted to sell them in the EU. Apple, in a statement, said, We remain concerned that strict regulation mandating just one type of connector stifles innovation rather than encouraging it, which in turn will harm consumers in Europe and around the world. In the past, they've argued that this switch would be worse for the environment because it renders hundreds of millions of lightning accessories obsolete, which is not a terrible point, but also we could just every every connector and every cable will eventually be obsolete. We could just stop making lightning ones and that would be good. Yeah, because... and it doesn't it doesn't make them obsolete right away. It's not like everyone's current lightning devices just vanish in thin air. I my biggest problem with this, and there's there's probably something put aside for this. I just haven't seen anything about it. So I'm gonna bring it up anyways. Is when does this stop? When does it stop? Yeah. Like, do like, we are do we, we stuck with USB C forever? It, it's in the future. It's now 2069. There's tons of memes about the year. It's great. It's a wonderful year. No one remembers the pandemic. We've moved on. Mm -hmm. And every single device in the EU still has USB C. Like, when, when does it stop? When, when do we, and does the next version have to be? like a USB platform connector? Like, well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, the more likely move for Apple because they've been moving this direction for it's just no a very plugged. long time. Yeah, just move away from ports. I mean, um, this is really interesting. In an FCC filing that was viewed by Mac rumors, Apple added a module to the Watch Series 7 that enables 60.5 gigahertz wireless data transfer. Now, on a watch, there's no real reason that you would have to have such fast data transfer unless the intention was that that's all you got um because the only time you would ever really use that is during during setup and synchronization like uh, or that's the only time that i would think of that it would really matter they i don't think they intend to use something like that just for wi-fi around your house because 60 gigahertz wi-fi is not really useful for moving around and a watch is like by by its very nature constantly moving around so this would be the kind of thing where right. you would yeah. put your watch next to your phone so they have line of sight and they would sync and that would be that um you, you kind of wouldn't touch it again so one thing that looks like a bit of an obstacle to this is that the lightning connector is still the fastest way to charge an iPhone, even with the launch of the new iPhone 13 and 13 Pro, which just happened last week. Uh, I actually shot my short circuit. I was hands-on with them today. Pretty sweet. Uh, even with the launch of those, the lightning connector is still the fastest way to charge an iPhone. You get 7.5 watts via Qi charging, 15 watts via MagSafe charging, and 20 watts over the lightning port. So Apple would either have to get more aggressive about their charging, and actually I support their position, keeping their wireless charging speeds very conservative. I think it's the right thing to do for consumers to protect them from their own bad habits by forcing them to charge their devices in a way that is healthier for the battery. And you can, you can argue with me all day. I don't care. The bottom line is that even if it's only a... 2% difference a year or a 1% difference a year. That's cumulative. And these are devices that people, especially in the case of iPhones, might use for five or six years. If you could have, you know, 6% better battery life after, by the end of using your device, would you, would you want that? Would you press that, that button? I, I'd say most people would. Why not? Who doesn't want to have extra battery life, right? So I, I yeah. support Apple maintaining their slow wireless charging speeds. Um, and I'll be interested to see if they have to juice them up in order to make this switch. I mean, what they could do is they could just not be stubborn and they could put a USB-C connector on the iPhone, just like they already did on the MacBook and already did on the iPad. On the iPad. So, you know, that, that's an alternative. But Apple is, can be very rigid sometimes. 
Like on the one hand, they can be very pragmatic and and business oriented, but on the other hand, they can be very uh, they can be very emotional. It seems resistant to change. Yeah. So, and we we've been talking about this coming in. I feel like for literally years. Yes. Um, and it's finally here. It took this long to get here. So, so you think this could essentially be the end of cables? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that could be it. Uh, Zorg666 said, don't forget about the huge environmental impact because wireless charging is much less efficient. Um, that is a fair point. I mean, I would be really interested to see what the actual, you know, grid draw numbers are of people charging their phones. I suspect it's not that big compared to running lights and drying clothes and cooking and all those other extremely high draw uh, activities. But I mean, waste is never better. Never it, could. It, it yeah. does concern me to see things like uh, wireless charging pads for cars that are boasting. Uh, I, oh man, which one? I think it was like eighty percent efficiency charger. For That's cars. some next level laziness. Whoa. Well, I mean, do you deny that it would be pretty cool to just roll into your garage? And never, I mean, just I, literally never think about charging your car. If you could never I, think about charging your phone, if just like as you as you wandered around your house, you had wireless charging, you know, beam transmitters, and they could just charge your phone. You just never thought Tesla about it. Mode. Would yeah, that'd be that'd be sweet. That'd be sweet, and the car thing would be sweet as well. But like, yeah, that's a lot of, that's a pretty gratuitous amount of waste. I feel. Yeah. I don't even know the percentage yet. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a pretty gratuitous amount of waste. Like, yeesh, sheesh. Apparently, this is as high as 92%, plus or minus 2%, you could handle with wireless charging. But even, let's say the, so the best case scenario. 96 yeah, plus or minus 2 for wired. So this is a 4% difference. But on something like oh, a car. 4% on a car is a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. That is a, definitely a larger concern for me than phones. But if you if you claim to be if you claim to be a steward of the planet, um, cutting out inefficiencies anywhere is 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 a good is is difficult to argue with. I guess is how I would getting put an that. electric car because you want to be kind to the environment, and then getting a wireless charging pad would be a hilarious combo. I like, I kind of want to catch someone doing that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. That's it. All right. Microsoft announced some new service. Someone, someone in Flowplane chat said, don't care, get solar. I mean, that's fair. Uh, yeah. Producing yeah. solar panels is not. Uh, but if you have them impact. anyways. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Because a lot of the times you're going to charge your car overnight when your usage of your power is lower, I guess. And the sun is not shining. The sun is also not out. Unless you had, like, unless, I mean, Tesla has that cool thing where you can use your Tesla as a battery uh, for their solar solution or whatever. Um, like, that's super cool. I could see something. I also like think that being you're, you're not, I, I suspect you're not going to have to install an additional solar panel or an additional battery because of the 4% loss from wireless charging. So I think it's going to make essentially no difference in your actual setup. That's fair. That's fair. 